it's a, it's a long drive, a long drive, man. Fuck. Overlog Inc. CDL and non CDL drivers. Oh, I got to put you on the list right quick. You know, trailers make the perfect billboards. Rolling billboards. If you ever, if you are owner operator and you own your own truck and trailer, <laughs> what's good, everybody, and welcome back. Welcome back to the Lockout Man Podcast Show. Thank you, thank you. I really do appreciate you guys being here. How y'all doing out there? Y'all doing all right? Y'all driving okay? Y'all being safe? Let's get right into it. Let's not waste no time. So I seen this comment in the She Trucking Trucking Group. Shout out to She Trucking. Shout out to all the wonderful women that has decided to come into this industry and do something that you know, you you felt that you couldn't do, but you're being a success at doing it. Shout out to you guys. All right. But I want to be honest uh, and I, I want to be brutally, brutally honest. Now, some of you guys, it's going to take this the wrong way and I get it. But I'm sorry. I'm just going to have to be brutally honest with you. The lady you 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 ladies out here talking about being safe being precautious being uh taking precaution and stuff like that you guys you guys you ladies of today you modern ladies of today you modern truck driver ladies of today y'all really don't get it y'all you you talking about oh we got to be safe out here there's a lot of dangers out here it's not safe for a woman out here in trucking and all like that no 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 it wasn't safe for women back in the 70s back in the 80s where ladies have to have a have protection even at the showers Ladies back then didn't have his and her showers. Their doors wasn't locked. Ladies back then really had to look over their shoulders and make sure that somebody wasn't watching or, or, or plotting. There really wasn't no safety for women back in the day. Where they actually had to go to dark fuel stations and worry about Jimmy, Jimmy, nobody coming up and, and taking them and snatching them up and kidnapping. Yeah, that was a thing back then. That was a thing back then where truck drivers used to chop them up and leave them in the leave them in their freezer. Back then, it wasn't like a, a, a reefer. It was it was a refrigerator. And you ladies over here talking about what well, I got to take precautions, what I got to do to take precautions and stuff like that. Now, see, back then it wasn't an issue. You could carry. You could carry. You could carry a gun. Back then. It probably wouldn't have been no problem back then. But now I see all you ladies and I'm sorry. But I see all you ladies over here calling yourselves securing the door with the seatbelt. <sighs> securing the door with the seatbelt. Doing all this home alone tricks with your truck to stay safe. I get it. I understand you want to be safe out here, but... You know, I'm I'm about to be in agreement with some other truck drivers that if you got to go through all of that, then maybe this isn't the career industry profession that you need to be in. 
Now let me break it down to you. I saw this. I saw this comment, and I I wholeheartedly agree with this comment, especially when it comes to weapons, to guns. Everybody loves to suggest get yourself a gun. Get yourself a gun. Get yourself a nine millimeter. Get yourself a a twenty. Get yourself a gun. You'll be protected. But let me tell you, 90% of the companies today, it's against company policy to have a weapon like a gun in the truck. Let me say it again and make sure you read that thick ass policy book that they freaking give you that somewhere in that book it will say that guns are not allowed in the truck everybody that's suggesting just get a gun (sighs) listen let's be serious about it all right let's be serious about it because majority of you ladies don't know how to use a gun. Some of them, some some of you ladies, even if you pull it out, you still might be afraid to use it. You know, some Joe Schmo just might smack that bad boy out your hand and use it against you. A gun is a serious weapon. Very serious. Let me, let me, let me talk to you for a minute. A gun, if you don't know how to use it properly, could get you in trouble. Right. It comes with serious responsibilities, serious repercussions. Just think if somebody comes up and fucks with you. Right. And, you know, and if you tell them, hey, leave me alone, don't bother me, yada, yada, yada. And if they turn around. You 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 show them the weapon. And then they turn around and, and, and leave and you still pull that weapon and you use it. The threat is gone. That's how the police is going to see it. They're not going to look at it and say, oh, you was in uh, self-defense. No, you shot him in the back. The threat is gone. You're in trouble. Ain't no, ain't, ain't no good self-defense lawyer will help you in that. Just saying, listen to what, listen to what I'm saying. All right. You can only draw your weapon, your gun. If are you, are you ready for this? If you're in fear for your life, that means if you tell the person to get the fuck away from you and they don't, and they keep coming after you, after you tell them a few times, then that's one way to use your weapon and that would be self-defense right or if so, or if serious bodily injury meaning that if if you're hurt or get hurt and the last thing that you can reach for is your gun and take them out that's another reason all right or the life or injury of someone else. So if you see another young lady in the fuel stop or on the road getting their ass brutally beat and you pull the gun and you tell that person to back the fuck off and they don't and you use it, that's you can use. Everything that I just mentioned is good cases for self-defense. Your self-defense lawyer will will plead the case. He will show the facts. And if the facts are true, then you're able to, you know, you're able to get you off. Self-defense, right? But when you draw a weapon, listen now, when you draw the weapon, you better be prepared to fucking use it. Don't just pull it out and show it. Oh, look how pretty my my pink handle gun is. 
or or look how or look how mean I can look with the gun in my hand. No, nah, when you pull that bad boy, when you pull it, you better be ready to use it. Period. Period. No shooting up in the air because you can get in trouble for that. No, no shooting around the bush. You can get in trouble for that. You better be prepared to use it when you pull it out. Now, if somebody have now somebody else has a gun and they pull it out. You best believe they're going to be ready to use that motherfucker. So go ahead and and use it. You better be ready, though. But let me ask you this. When you do pull it out, though, here's the things that you, you know, might want to think about. And you you might not be able to think about it because it's the heat of the moment. The adrenaline is pumping. The 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 heat, the the the, the intensity. All that shit, all that knowledge, all that, all that same mind shit is thrown out of the fucking window when you get in a situation and I get it. But think about it. Think about it. Are you prepared to take another person's life? Are you? Because once you shoot that person and that person died, that does that that weighs a lot on your mental. Right? Are you ready for that? Will you? Okay, will you? Will you practice with it? Meaning that will you go to the range? Buying a gun is 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 the it, it, just because you got a gun, you you got to know how to use the motherfucker. You got to know how to aim it. You got to know how to clean it. You got to know how you got to know how will you click it, click clack, that nice little sound that you hear that that nice little Yeah, you got to know what all that's what all that does. You got to know the intricate parts. You got to know how to take the gun apart and clean it and use it. And make sure that when you use it, you aim you can't just take the gun out and just go willy nilly on it. You got to at least know the aim because see, when you aim, you perfect your aim, right? Do you know what type of ammunition that it use? We're not, we're, we're not talking about the caliber, you know, nine millimeter caliber. You know what I'm saying? I don't see no sweat in your brow neither, bro. You, you know, it's more than the caliber you got to know what type of bullets that there's there's hollow points there's blackheads there's met full metal jackets and you might want to take the time to see which each one of these motherfucking bullets do this range and this caliber even if i miss i can't miss like i got i, I got bullets the hollow point bullets with the red tip Shoot that motherfucker, and when it enters the body, it expands and explodes. Hit them Walters like to jump some. As will you, with one in your elbow. That gun ain't got enough firepower to make my joint useless. It definitely won't stop me from emptying out half my mag. Fuck a nigga holds life up. Do you know what your bullets do? Oh, no, my... My 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 bullets going in there, going to body and just no no you do you know what the bullet do? Like four metal jacket bullets goes through the body. There's always an exit wound when you when you shoot a when you shoot a full metal jacket. Think about that, ladies. Think about that. What happens if you miss who you're shooting at? You might not hit me. Right? They could be right in front of you and you could still miss them. But let me rewind what I just said, though. A full metal jacket goes straight through. So you can shoot the one person that you intend to shoot. And that metal jacket goes through that person and through another person. Then what? Then what? Driver? Then what? What if the bullet, like I said before, 
What if the bullet go past the intended target and enters the cab next to you? Now, mind you, a lot of people say, get a gun, get a gun. Now, mind you, you in a small, confined space. And again, like I said, full metal jacket bullets go straight through a body. Out the window, into the next truck across the way, who could just be sitting in the front, reading the motherfucking, reading the motherfucking porno, getting his rocks off. And then all of a sudden the bullet just sing and that's it. Then what? Then what you gonna do? Then what you gonna do? Right? Even if you shoot and kill the person you were in fear of, now you will have to be tried. Yes, you you you're gonna have to get tried. And again, that's where a good defense lawyer comes into play. In order, in in order, in order to, in order to, for it to be proven a righteous shooting, that's about ten k. Now, a lot of you lady drivers out here that's coming into this industry, and a lot of people that say, "Yo, get a gun for protection." A lot of y'all motherfuckers ain't making ten k a month. A lot of y'all motherfuckers ain't even making ten k a fucking six months. Y'all only making like four, five hundred dollars because y'all brand new to the game. Y'all not making that big two thousand dollars, three thousand dollars, ten thousand dollars a month shit yet. And you know, a lot of you, come on now, a lot of you that's in this, that's in this industry, that's in this game, y'all don't even have, y'all, y'all don't even have a a, a, a lawyer. Even though majority of the companies offer, you know, legal services for drivers. Let's be honest. A lot of us don't even have that shit. We always get that shit after the fact. You ladies know y'all come up in the she trucking trucking group. Hey, I just got a ticket. 50 or 65 in the 50. What to do? What to do? If I pay the ticket, would I be okay? How can I fight the ticket? Y'all know. So that's the same thing. If you shoot somebody, y'all going to come in the group. I shot somebody. What to do? And then everybody that says, yo, get a gun, get a gun. They have no fucking idea. Because they was never in that situation to fucking begin with. But they're quick to say, get a gun. Get a gun, get a gun. Now that you got a gun and you used it, the same people that you that you thought that gave you some good advice, now they don't have none. Think about that before you come in and say, yo, I'm taking precautions and and I, I wanna know, I, I wanna know what to do. Oh, well, get a gun. Okay. And that's not even taking in consideration the individual state laws against carrying concealed. Now, Ohio, where I'm from, I have my concealed carry license. I do got to refresh them. But my license is not recognized in Baltimore. You want to know how I know? Because I got pulled over. Baltimore State Police pulled me over, you know. He asked me where I was going. I told him I was going to the Horseshoe Casino. And he said that I, you know, kind of like swerved a little bit. He thought I was tired or whatever. And I told him no. He thought I was drinking. I told him no. He gave me the breathalyzer. Yes, he did. I blew it in there and it was good. I, you know, no problem. He told he asked me, he said, yo, do you have a weapon in the car? I said, yes, I do. He says, uh, where is it? I says, it's in the center glove box. He said, I, I, I asked him, I said, you want me to get out? No, no, I'll get it out. Is it loaded? Yes, it is. And it's one in the chamber. So he went in there, got it out, brought it to the back of the truck, took it apart, took the one in the chamber out. And he asked me, he said, do you have, uh, do you, do you have papers? Yes, I do. And I also gave him my concealed carry license. Well, you give him that right when you 
give them your license. You know, the way I do it, everything that I need to give to the officer, I will already have it ready. That's a tip. I live, I live by that. I even give the same thing to my son. All this, all this digital, this digital shit that's coming up now. Oh, well, you got your your driver's license on your phone, or you got your your uh Geico insurance card on your phone. Fuck that. Give me a physical card. I don't want to give the cop nothing but the credentials. Paper. Don't need my phone. For what? What you need my phone for, bruh? Don't need that. Paper, driver's license, insurance, and registration. Sometimes you don't even need registration, but if you have it, give it to them. That's it. Don't say nothing. Sit there. You got the right to remain silent. Don't even see the cops likes to engage and they, they know what to say to get you to say certain key words. But if you sit there and don't say nothing at all, you get you got that you got that right. Give them the information. You know why I pulled you over? I don't know, sir. Because see, if they ask you that question and you turn around, yeah, I, I was speeding. Boom, you're already on video, you're already on tape, and and the judge gonna be like, yo, you already said you was you was speeding. So don't say nothing at all. Right? So he he took my gun apart, gave him all the credentials, and he says, you know, Baltimore is not a concealed carry state. Huh. But in order to travel with your weapon, your gun has to be separated from the ammunition, meaning that your gun, in my case, my gun had to be up in the truck in the cab with me while the ammunition is in the it's in the it's in the back part of the truck. At least that's what he told me. I could be wrong. It probably might be different. This was years ago. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Don't even try carrying concealed carrying or try to get away with that shit in places like new york illinois california think about that <clears throat> think about that don't you you get pulled over and dot decides to uh let let me go ahead and uh search your cab because you know if they get probable cause, they can search your cab. And if they find a gun, you're done. Don't even try that shit going over the border. Going into Canada, Mexico. <laughs> Don't try that shit. I'm just saying. Just get a gun from all the people that say, just get a gun. Is the stupidest advice I keep seeing in the she trucking trucking group. Ladies, I love you. I love you. I respect you. I rise for you. But you got to you 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 got to do better. Okay? You got to do better than just get a gun. Now, hold up. Stay stay with me now. Stay with me now because I'm going to flip it on you in a second. All right? Now again, like I said, I am a man. And yes, I, I do have my concealed carry. All right. I'm, I'm about to flip it on you. All right. I'm going to start next year looking into different states. Probably might get concealed carry permits in, in the states that I travel. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to see if that's possible. All right. Now, for let me now listen. Let me flip it. I'm about to I'm about to flip it. About to flip it. Now, what would I just said about get you know getting a gun is probably not a good idea. But I'm going to flip it on you. Now, for a company driver, company keyword company driver. Yes, 
you won't be able to carry your weapon in their truck. Number one, it's their truck. If they don't want you carrying a weapon in their truck, what you going to do? This is what you're going to do. You're going to get your own truck. That's right. That's right. Yes, yes, that's right. That's right. Hear me out now. You're going to get your own truck. Not a lease truck from a company because that truck is technically still theirs. You're renting their truck. So that's still their truck. I'm talking about buy your own truck. Deed, title, paper with your name on that deed, title, or paper. And what you paying for to if you pay cash out or you paying cash to. Now, when you in your own truck that has your name on the side of the truck, Lockout Men LLC on the side of the truck, then and probably only then you can get your gun and you can keep it on the truck. You can take it with you. You can conceal carry with you in your truck. Okay. All right. Now, here's another thing that I that I be seeing. Not not just in the she trucking trucking group, but all these other trucking groups, because I'm a member of all of them. I see you guys after you guys give that good advice. Just get a gun, get a gun. You guys show love to show it off. Y'all love to show it off in, in the truck. Y'all love to see it in the seat, in the front seat of the truck, up under the seat. Oh, I got two of them. One up under my pillow and then one up under the one up under the uh, dashboard. Why the fuck you want to come on social media and tell where the fuck you keep your guns at? That's something you don't tell. Social media got y'all motherfuckers fucked up. Do y'all really have to come on here and tell all your fucking business? All of it? All of it? All of the secrets? Like, hey, for precautions, I'm going to tie my seatbelt around the door. Hmm, okay. Well, guys, she got her she got her door, she got her seatbelt tied around the door. So I'll just take this big ass rock right here and bust out the fucking window and then climb up through the window. See, it's like I said, you know, taking precautions. You you could still be putting your life in danger because now that that person that really want to fucking get in your truck is in your truck and now you're trying to get out and why you 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 know why you can't get out because your door is secured by the seatbelt none of y'all motherfuckers don't think about that shit see when y'all do things y'all got to y'all y'all got to think two or three steps ahead and you gotta look at you gotta look at the big picture. Okay, so tying the seatbelt around the door. All right, what will happen if I get sick and I get I need medical emergency? Oh well, you know I got a door on the side of my on the side of my truck. Well, yeah, we know Peter Bilts got that uh got the door you know on the side of the truck, but not all trucks have that. Not all trucks have that little emergency. Not all of uh, Max, Internationals, Freightliners. Not all of them have that, especially in the new models. Not all of them have that. So still, how are you going to get out the door? How? I just need to know how. Once that motherfucker is already in the truck. Let's say they bust out the windows. They got a pocket knife. They cut the belt and still open the door anyway. Then what you going to do? Look, let me tell you something, ladies. 
All right. When the motherfucker want to get at you on some for real shit, a motherfucker is going to get at you on some for real shit. Just lock your doors. All right. Listen to me now. Here, here's some precautions, right? If you want to do some precautions in an area that you're not familiar with, number one, lock your doors. Number two, cover your windows. If you got one of them, if you got if you got curtain skirts that goes around the that goes around the front, cover it. Lock the doors. Cover your windows. Okay. Get you now on the truck. Here's some tips for you, for you ladies from the lockout men, all right? Get you some wasp spray. Can't go wrong. Spray that shit in the, in, in, the, in the motherfucker's eye, he's done. Get you a can of mace. Spray that shit in the motherfucker's eye, he's done. Now, some of the remnants of the spray, especially for mace, you probably might get a contact. Be safe. Be safe, okay? Be safe. And if you are in a place that you're not familiar with, don't make yourself a target. Again, like I said, close your curtains. Don't be walking out in the truck stops in your in your hoop dresses and your hoop shirts and 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 your body suits and and the leggings that shows all of your derriere and and the body shirts that shows all of your boobs and everything. Not like that. Don't be out there doing the TikTok dances and doing TikTok stupid shit in your truck and all like that, you know, just saying. Those are precautions right there. Again, social media just made it a lot easier for these motherfuckers to, to prey on you. It was easy back then. It's a lot easier now. If you guys like this conversation right here, man, and uh, if you guys want to join in on it, leave your comments in the comments below. Let's engage, man. I probably might be wrong. You know, some of you ladies probably might have some, probably have some pushback for me. Come on with it. I'm ready. I'm ready. Come on with it. All right. I'm ready because y'all the same ones that be, get a gun. Get a gun. You'll be okay with a gun. Okay. Again, like I said in the beginning of the conversation, what would happen if the dude smacked that motherfucking gun out your hand and use it against you? Then what? Then what? Let's 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 talk about it. Let's talk about it in the comments below, y'all. If you like this conversation, make sure you leave a like. It works, it helps, it does the body good. And if you like what I'm doing over here on the Lockout Men podcast show, yo, subscribe. Come on and subscribe. And if you want to jump on here and talk with me, because the best conversations starts here on the Lockout Man podcast show. Reach out to me. I'm right here. Hit me up in the comments below. Till the next conversation, y'all. Y'all take it easy and I'll holler back at you in a minute. Peace.